Supreme Court has agreed to hear a case that could change how political elections are held. The question is whether a long-standing practice of redrawing districts is in fact constitutional. Joe Tui explains how gerrymandering works and why the justices may put a stop to it. Imagine this, scheming politicians locked away in some fancy room with giant maps, slicing and dicing, drawing the perfect voting districts to make sure their political party remains in power for years to come. It kind of sounds like the scene from some dystopian movie, but that scenario is a lot closer to reality than you might think. It's called political gerrymandering, and a case about an extreme version of it is before the Supreme Court. Gerrymandering is a bit of a catch-all phrase. Michael Lee is the senior redistricting counsel at NYU Law School's Brennan Center for Justice. What we're talking about in like the case that's at the Supreme Court is a, what we call extreme gerrymandering. Where one party sort of locks in a disproportionate share of seats for the course of a decade. The way it generally works is every 10 years after the census, the party in control of the state government draws the voting district maps that will be used over the next decade. So let's say you have 50 voters, 20 from the yellow party and 30 from the green party, and you need to divide it into five voting districts. With a fairly drawn map, the green party should win three of the five districts, like this. But let's say the yellow party controls the government. They can gerrymander the map in such a way that their party wins a three to two majority, despite being in the minority. It's happened in states across the country begging the question, are voters choosing their politicians? Or are politicians choosing their voters? It's really sort of the politicians who do the choosing, and that's particularly the case when one party controls uh, the whole process. They control both houses of the legislature and control the, the governorship, and um, that uh, means that vote politicians are picking their voters, and there's room for a lot of shenanigans. So this is the framework of what's going on in the case before the Supreme Court, Gill v. Whitford. In 2010, Republicans in Wisconsin redrew the maps, and in the next election, despite receiving only 47% of the vote statewide, Republicans won 61% of the state assembly seats and have held that majority since. They um, locked it in, so even if there are fairly large electoral swings, Republicans maintain control of the majority in, in Wisconsin, and you know, that's really sort of unprecedented, and, and by many measures, the Wisconsin map is the worst you know, in more than four decades of, of maps across the country. And it's Republicans in this case, but Democrats do it too. And it's brought together current and former leaders from all stripes. So I say it is time to say hasta la vista to gerrymandering. Hoping the Supreme Court overturns that Wisconsin map and sets new guidelines for extreme political gerrymandering. Herpes and colonoscopies are more popular than Congress. <laughs> but for some miracle reason, 98% of them get reelected. And the reason is because it's a fixed system. And that pulls things to the extremes. If you want to govern from the, from the middle, if you want people to be able to work together in a bipartisan way, we should get rid of gerrymandering. And when the court heard oral arguments in October, some of the justices seemed sympathetic to the idea that gerrymandering spells big problems for future elections. What becomes of the precious right to vote when we have that result, when the individual citizen says, I have no choice, I'm in this district, and we know how this district is going to come out. I mean, that's something that the society should be concerned about. Right now, all signs point to Justice Anthony Kennedy being the swing vote in the case. And experts warn if the Supreme Court refuses to weigh in or allows the process to continue, things could only get worse. Maps are going to be able to be drawn with micro precision, and they're going to stick and essentially render elections um, useless. You know, we'll, we'll basically have one election that matters, the election right before redistricting, and everything else will be locked in. And that's really sort of anti-democratic. It's not at all what the framers wanted. In just last month, the Supreme Court agreed to take on another partisan gerrymandering case, this one from Maryland, with Democrats as the alleged bad actors. As for when we might get a ruling, experts say that both opinions are likely to come down together and that'll likely either be in May or June of this year. Big cases before the court. Big, big cases. Thank you.